The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Calories, calories, <laughs> calories. Wow, uh, it rocked my world. It just kind of reminded me of like a boot camp. I don't know what you have, but this is great. <laughs> it almost felt like sort of country club food to me. Don't touch it, it's hot. I gotta tell you, people are getting me excited with all these dishes, this is crazy. Check Please Bay Area is brought to you by Locally owned and operated for 23 years, Amici's East Coast Pizzeria's 12 Bay Area restaurants offer authentic New York-style pizzas cooked in traditional open flame ovens. Along with pizzas, Amici's freshly made pastas and salads are also available for delivery to home or business one order at a time. With many vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free options, Amici's menu has something everyone can enjoy. Menu and online ordering feature can be found at amici's.com. Amici's East Coast Pizzeria, proud to support KQED. From sommelier city walks and chef-led journeys to discovering nature on the Great Barrier Reef, Tourism Australia means adventure. More at australia.com slash now. And by Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. And the Campaign for the Future Program Venture Fund and the members of KQED. Hi, I'm Leslie Sobraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Lois Laurie sells used shipping containers all over the states. But when it comes to buying her favorite meal, it's homestyle Italian and she finds it hard to contain her satisfaction after every meal at her place. And Joanna Manders is a product designer. <laughs> Along with specs for bag designs in her purse is a blueprint for regular visits to a little French spot on a tree-lined street in Coal Valley. But first, Ed Ueshima is a Renaissance man in the making. A web product marketer, opinionated food lover, and self-professed restaurant junkie. His spot is a small hole in the wall, but with a big awning. It's where the dishes don't rely on presentation, just flavor. It's on Larkin Street in San Francisco, and it's called Pagolak, Mom's Vietnamese Kitchen. My name is James Quinn Chan, and I'm one of the owners here at Pagolak Restaurant. The restaurant started in 1991 here on Larkin Street in the Tenderloin District. Our mom passed away in 2005. She was coming into work from the farmer's market and uh, she was struck by a car on a high-speed chase. We closed the restaurant for about three months and the, it was a unanimous decision that we wanted to reopen in her honor with my brother David stepping in her shoes as the chef and ever since it's kind of been like a healing space for all of us. Our restaurant serves southern Vietnamese cuisine so we pride ourselves on keeping what my mom had going which was visiting the farmers market to get her produce. Romaine lettuce, bean sprouts, cilantro, mint, and pickled carrots, and daikon. And these are from local farmers in the Bay Area. The experience of coming into Pagalak restaurant is like traveling through Southeast Asia. So grab some friends, come on down, and enjoy Southern Vietnamese food with your hands. All right, Ed, let's talk about Pagalak. I just think Pagalak is a great family-run restaurant. It's a, a small business and not so attractive part of our town. <laughs> um, but I really, I've been going for about 15 years. It's uh, actually, uh, it's been around since about 91. The head waitress at that place actually bought the place ah, from the original yeah. owner in about mm -hmm. 2001. And then sadly, she uh, was killed in a car accident oh. nearby. And her four children actually took over. And, and is that why it's Mom's Vietnamese Kitchen? In honor right. of her? It's in honor of her and her recipes right. and her homestyle recipes. I just think for really good bargain, fresh Vietnamese, it's just a great place to go. And I just pretty much 
watch, I go a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and just, uh, yeah, I just enjoy quite a bit of their menu. And d when you went, Lois, what did you have? Well, we had the uh, beef. It's uh, seven different dishes of beef, and it seemed like everybody around us were having it. Uh -huh. So we decided to have it. But to tell you the truth, I was disappointed. Oh. This was my first time, I think, at a Vietnamese restaurant. Oh, so really? I had to take the rice, mm -hmm. and you had to know how to turn it exactly right. Yes. And a couple of times I didn't have it right, and so it was all mushed up by the time I got oh, the thing together. Dear. But but that wasn't it. I found the dishes, the first three dishes, mm -hmm. very similar. Mm. And the only one I really liked was the third one, which was done in a butter sauce, and it was mm -hmm. like barbecued. And yeah. that one was good. But the first two, I thought they tasted the same, very okay. bland. So it was only five flavors of, of beef to you. Yeah. It wasn't the, the full right. seven flavors <laughs> yes. of beef. Absolutely. <laughs> and that is certainly their signature, isn't it, the That's seven flavors? Exactly right. Mm -hmm. So you, you have seven flavors. You have the marinated beef. You definitely have the fire pot, and uh, you put the beef in that. And then you also have a grill where you put the meat in, and then you have this mound of, of lettuce and, and all sorts of vegetables. And you had the same thing as well, didn't yeah. you, yeah. I had the yeah. seven courses of beef, and I am I have to say I'm not a big meat eater, uh -huh. so I first was a little bit hesitant, but I was not disappointed by that. I oh. loved the seven courses of beef. Mm. I thought that, uh, it, first of all, it was like an experience because mm -hmm. they bring all these courses out and they're all a little bit different, mm -hmm. but they were all very uh, thin pieces. It wasn't like too much meat. And that's what I was thinking, you know, oh, seven courses right. sounds like a lot, but everyone was a little bit different. And also the experience of making your own wraps was that's so right. it's much very fun. It's very hands-on. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, yeah, you cook you cook the meat and then you can actually put the, the correct proportions of uh -huh. lettuce, mint, and topping in there. And then also just moistening the rice paper mm -hmm. um, wraps was really fun. And I just thought it was, I thought it was delicious. I mean, I think the quality of the food there was really right on. But I think maybe I chose the wrong thing because, the, you know. Mm -hmm. the but that's what they're known for. So, mm -hmm. Ed, what would you suggest that Lois try? Sure. Uh, the spring rolls are always a good indicator of how good a Vietnamese restaurant mm -hmm. is. And I think they're just super fresh. They're very crunchy, very tasty. Uh, I also think their five-spice chicken is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, they even do a chow mein dish, which isn't like a normal uh, chi uh, chow mein dish. It actually looks a bit like a brick right. with all sorts of uh, vegetables all over it. And that's very tasty as well. I loved the plum drink that I had. Mm -hmm. It was sort of drink. fizzy plum, yeah. and it had a little bit of a taste of saltiness to it, mm -hmm. which I've never tasted in my life. Like the, the combination of uh, it being fizzy and salty, I've never tasted anything like that. And then um, I have to rave about the sticky rice pudding mm. with the dates, yeah. and um, it was coconut, like it right. had a coconut. Um, sauce in it, mm -hmm. and it was just a And, that, and you don't think sometimes at a Vietnamese restaurant of necessarily dessert. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know. And their fried banana is fantastic oh, as well. Yeah. But you're really coming for the food, correct? You really are coming for the food. I, I mean, I really am a strong believer in supporting uh, local businesses like that that are mm -hmm. family run. And mm -hmm. I mean, what I really genuinely like about it is they're very proud of the uh, the food that they make. And it's very much the recipes are part of, uh, part of their reputation. And I really, I, I just, yeah, I really go for the, the, the clay pot and all, and all of that. And it's very, uh, it's rather minimalist in terms mm -hmm. of decoration and all of right. that. But you yeah. always know, frankly, I've a picture on the wall. That's there wasn't what a I was picture on say. the wall. <laughs> I think they should throw some pictures on the wall just to up it a little maybe, bit. Maybe a so. But maybe a coat of paint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's 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 the food is so yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, did you feel like you were? It's a bargain. Bargain. Did you feel? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great bargain. Mm -hmm. I think that you are going to get quality food for a great deal. I mean, it's in the city. I mean, you're, you're going to get very authentic Vietnamese food, I thought, mm -hmm. and it's not going to hurt your wallet right. at all. And did I you, appreciate that. Did you feel signs. like you got good value mm -hmm. at least? Definitely you had good value for yeah. your money. You can't yeah. do much better. Yeah. Right. Seven courses for that price. Right. I, I think that, uh -huh. you know, the tenderloin is, you know, very colorful, mm -hmm. but that's part of the adventure of going to this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ed, this is your restaurant, so give us a quick summary. Absolutely. For a family-run uh, Vietnamese restaurant with great quality food, you can't beat Pagalok. Lois? Well, I still say I found the dishes a little bland, contrary to others' opinion, but maybe I have to go with Ed next time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Joanna? I thought, uh, don't be deterred by the location. Uh, the food's phenomenal, and it's easy on your wallet. 
All right, if you would like to try Pago Lock, Mom's Vietnamese Kitchen, it's on Larkin Street at Ellis in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-776-3234. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $15. By the way, that's cash only. A gated entry and a pathway lead to a dining room and patio at Lois's spot. Just off the main square in Sonoma, the Italian menu full of family recipes from Luca make it a regular haunt for her. It's on East Napa Street in Sonoma and is called Della Santina's Trattoria. My name is Quirico Salvatore Giovanni Della Santina. My grandfather is the originator of the Della Santina family uh, food business in Luca, and uh, we had a bakery, a spaghetti factory, and a grocery store. I grew up actually in my grandmother's house, so I remember the taste of my grandmother with very simple food, but fresh and wholesome. Ravioli are the same recipe. The bread, we make fresh dessert because originally I'm a baker. We imported all the uh, flavoring, the lemon, the rum and the, from the Italian, so they can get the same taste as Italian pastry shops. Hi, my name is Rob Della Santina. Um, we are enjoying our 20th year of business in beautiful Sonoma Valley. Our cooking here is traditional Tuscan country food. Uh, I like to call it Tuscan soul food. Uh, it is uh, trattoria cooking. It is not a restaurant, so it tends to be more casual. We don't deviate too much. We, we try and stay authentic and traditional in the way we prepare our foods. If somebody uh, put chicken in my pesto, my grandmother would definitely roll around in her grave. The experience uh, when you come here is to be transported and walk into the, uh, the garden and be actually in Italy. All right, Lois, as a fellow Sonoman, yes. <laughs> tell us about Del Della Santina's and why you go back regularly. Well, I've been going to this restaurant probably at least 10, 15 years, even before I moved to Sonoma. But once I moved to Sonoma, it just was such a comfortable place to go. And Robert, the owner, he always greets me. And before you know it, um, he's always bringing a little something special over, something you didn't order, and it just makes the feeling of the hominess of the restaurant just great. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite thing on the menu is the prawns doré, and they just melt in your mouth. And they do also do the petrali doré in a beer batter, but the, right. the, the pasta can't be beat. And it's nice in the winter because there's an inside place, but in the summer the patio is great, and they have little lights. and. It's just a very endearing mm -hmm. place to be. And what did you eat when you went there, Ed? I actually tried the, uh, first of all, the antipasti uh, plate, which I thought was terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so used to going to Italian restaurants where it feels or tastes very packaged, mm -hmm. and this one was very fresh, so I really enjoyed that. It's big, too. It's huge. <laughs> so and just beware, yeah, it's big. And, yeah, you get right. so much with it. And then I tried as an entree the, uh, the pappardelle with the duck mm -hmm. ragu and thought that was really good. I would have preferred the pasta a bit more al dente, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that's what you get with homemade. Uh, right. Sometimes it, it gets a little wet, but I thought the food was very satisfying. But I will tell you what I really thought was outstanding was the service. Okay. I just feel like, to your point, it's just very homey. Uh, the waiters seem to know everybody's name. I kind of felt left out because I wasn't a regular. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the the them have been with Robert for 10, 15 years. Yeah. It's a whole family. Of and it's family, exactly. the Della Santinas. Yeah, that's right. Right. Exactly. So, so Robert, who yeah. actually, did you have wine when you went? I because did. Well, I actually yeah. had uh, the Prosecco. Oh, you had Prosecco. Yes, right. and it was very it yeah, was very tasty, and uh, right. it, it, it actually went with uh, everything that we had. The one thing that I did want to mention was, you know, as I went into the restaurant, I wasn't aware it was all in different sections. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I noticed as I went to the, the restroom later on <laughs> that yeah. there was a, a quieter um, uh, section in the back, and we were seated definitely in a very small table in front, and I kind of felt like, okay, that's probably more the first class section. <laughs> and maybe yeah. I was in the economy. Yeah. I kind of felt like I was in a... Uh, 
uh, did you find that? Did, did you, you feel that way too? I felt like that too because I had yeah. the same experience. Of, oh, I was in the front yeah. and I mm-hmm. went to the bathroom. That's the only way I saw the back. Yeah. And we were in a very, it was almost a different vibe up in the front. Um, so then when I went to the back, I saw this nice patio that would have been beautiful on a nicer day. It was mm-hmm. raining that right. day, but right. it would have been beautiful. Yeah, right. it is. But I did feel like maybe I had chosen actually a wrong day to go there because mm-hmm. it might have been a nicer experience to be outside and on a nicer warm day. And there were a lot of kids in there too. Mm-hmm. It was kid but friendly. You can, you can yeah. kind of, now that you know, you can sort of direct exactly. right. say ask for we the bathroom. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly right. right. And when yeah. you went, what did you have to eat? I had a spinach ravioli with mushroom sauce, Mm -hmm. and I I, I thought it was okay, Mm -hmm. but I thought it was a little underwhelming just because I was in okay, Sonoma. Okay, the kiss of death. <laughs> it's okay. okay. I mean, I was in Sonoma, so I was expecting this unparalleled dining experience, uh-huh. and there's so many great restaurants up there that just are so memorable, and it didn't quite um, live up to what my And what my about the service? Were. Because Ed was saying the service mm-hmm. to him was something that was special. I, I think that the I think that the service was really good. I mm-hmm. I felt that they were very attentive and they were very nice. The thing about this restaurant that I like best is I always can get in, they're warm, they're friendly. Right. That's true. It, it might not be like, you know, five right. star quality, but But I you get it. treated very well. And again, That's I think true. with being in wine country, there is a, a California wine list, you know, peppered certainly with, mm-hmm. with uh, Italian selections that are lovely, um, but they do a wine club. The Enoteca oh, della Santina, mm-hmm. oh, Robert, nice. has a, a, right. an interesting wine club. Right. So, that's cool. um, you know, there is a wine focus and a wine country focus uh-huh. yeah. to the to the place. It's, it's All right, now desserts. Go, okay. honey. You tell us about your desserts. So, uh, I am a chocolate lover, originally from Hershey, PA, so I love chocolate. Uh, yeah. um, and I had a chocolate mousse cake, and I thought the chocolate mousse part was good, but then they drenched it in, a, in, in like an amaretto sauce mm. with candied cherries, which made it feel, it made it taste very um, artificial to me. Mm -hmm. I thought the tiramisu was actually quite good Mm -hmm. and uh, definitely world class. That's their specialty. specialty. Uh, But I will give them points for giving me a free glass of muscat. Did you get that too? Uh, I didn't get a free, what (laughs) they did for me was I was, I was deciding between two desserts, Mm -hmm. two chocolate desserts, and I didn't know what to choose, Mm -hmm. and they actually gave me the second one to take home because I couldn't decide. I thought that was really, really nice. They do that with everybody, and they didn't know who you were. They don't. So everybody gets like a little treat. It's amazing. Yeah. But I think it's more the Mm ambiance. The back is wonderful, like for Uh, a Sunday brunch. That would be nice to sit outside. Mm -hmm. All right, Lois, this is your restaurant, so give us a quick summary of Della Santina. A little family gem in the wine country. I love it. (laughs) All right, Joanna? I thought that the food was good, but I don't think I would drive an hour and a half to go to this restaurant again. Okay, and Ed, your feelings? Uh, Family style Italian, just make sure you ask for the upgrade. (laughs) If you would like to try Della Santina's Trattoria, it's on East Napa Street at First Street East in Sonoma. The telephone number is 707-935-0576. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $35. It's easy to miss Joanna's little French bistro, but once inside the vintage poster-lined walls, cozy atmosphere, and updated French menu make for a satisfying treat. It's on Cole Street in San Francisco, and it's called Zazie. I'm Jennifer Pila, owner of Zazie Restaurant in Cole Valley. Zazie, uh, the name of the restaurant came from the film Zazie dans le Metro by Louis Mal, a French film from the 60s, where the main character, Zazie, was uh, sort of the French Shirley Temple. But because she was French, of course, she drank and smoked and swore. Uh, Cole Valley is a real pocket in the center of the city, full of families. A lot of regulars come into our restaurant. I'd say we know about 80% of the people that walk in the door. That keeps us on our toes as far as constantly changing the menu, adding special events every season, 
And then we also have uh, special weekly events for them. Zazi feels like a house party. It feels like a, a home dinner party every night where tables next to each other know each other, where the staff knows their tables. We're the only non-union restaurant in San Francisco to have full benefits, to my knowledge. And I think that that really makes our staff welcoming and friendly and the kind of people that you want to come back and see again and again. Zazi has been famous for our brunches for years. However, my real favorite is the dinners. I think that they're unique, interesting, sitting outside on the garden patio under the stars. Okay, Joanna, I just like saying zazie, mais oui, zazie. <laughs> <laughs> this is French fair. This is, is casual bistro fair, right? Yes, it is a very cozy French bistro in Coal Valley, and it's just a really great neighborhood spot. I love driving over off the beaten track a little because it's not the hot, trendy spot. And I like how nice the, the service is and how they kind of accommodate you if you don't get in right away. You can go to the bar next door and get a drink. Mm -hmm. um, I, we, a, we actually um, got there early and they brought glasses out. They poured the beer for us when we brought our own beer on Tuesdays. Because and they have a, a bring your own, no corkage fee oh, right. on Tuesdays. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I just think that the food is so delicious. It's like French comfort food, and it's also a very good price. So I, I always enjoy it, and I also appreciate that I can talk to people. It's not too loud. I went for dinner, but I'll tell you, I was not expecting anything that terrific. Mm -hmm. I went with two friends. We had no idea where we were going, what we were doing, and we were thrilled. Oh, okay. And all three of us loved our food. That's great. And I had the price fix menu. Yes. And only because, not because of the price, but I was going to order everything mm -hmm. on it. It was delicious. I had the um, polenta mm -hmm. with the, the mascarpone and cakes. the regs and uh -huh. the tomato sauce. Drop dead. But my friend had the, had the um, raviolis with the prawns. Mm -hmm. And I'm having that next time. Oh, so you steal off the plate? It you was ate. so <laughs> yeah. good. Oh, and we great. all were happy, all three of us. So mm -hmm. it was, I think it was that's a great, great. find. That's great find. Now, and yeah. um, what did you have when you ate um, Yeah, I, we had the lemon ricotta mm -hmm. uh, ravioli, which was mm -hmm. fantastic. I got to tell you, the standout dish for me was actually the roasted uh, trout mm -hmm. with okay. cherry tomatoes and basil vinaigrette. That was so delicious. Mm -hmm. I've never had fish that great mm -hmm. and so I just thought it was a fantastic find mm -hmm. uh, for me. It, you're not kidding though about easily missing it because we oh, literally yeah. passed by I think three times before realizing oh there it is right, yes. uh, but uh, once Could we were you there find parking? Um, you know we actually used Muni because ah, it's right good. close to um, and Judah yeah. uh, line so it was very easy uh, right, just to right. go there so. Now are you a breakfast brunch person there or? Um... I usually go there for dinner. Mm -hmm. I actually have been there for brunch but I feel like the experience is a little bit better for dinner. Um, mm. I actually like sitting on the back patio. Mm -hmm. They have heat lamps on a cold San Francisco night and it's got lights strung up and it just feels a little bit like you're transported out of the city for mm -hmm. a little. So I, I really like that but I also love for brunch the mimosa that you can design yourself. Mm. It's like you can choose the juice that you wow. want in your mimosa and it's all different kinds of juice and then they can bring out they bring out a little carafe of the juice and then a craft of the champagne. So that's kind of fun if you're going with a girlfriend. I, I, like, I like Joey. <laughs> you yeah. have together. Yeah, that sounds good. It's a great, I think it's just a great place to go with friends and mm -hmm. uh, you can actually talk. Like a lot of places, they're too loud. Right. I feel like it's like this really nurturing environment mm -hmm. for conversation. You can even bring your dog on Monday You can bring, bring your, your dog. dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's right. a dog that. You bring yeah. your dog. Yeah. Yeah. So right. that's kind and of And what fun. about the service there? I thought the service was actually terrific. They mm -hmm. were very uh, attentive. You know, it's a very crowded space, so I, mm. I was kind of wondering, it, you know, how they were going to maneuver actually right. all the tables. But I, I have to really characterize the service as very seamless. They were, mm -hmm. they came right at the right time. To I, ask if we were happy with our meal, exactly. and then she just disappeared. It okay. was great, and we said That's we good. were thrilled, and then uh -huh. she just went away, which I like. I don't like someone hovering over right. you. Right. So. Did you have dessert, Lois? You were so thrilled with dinner, and um, you got a prefix. I menu. think we were full. I can't. <laughs> Oh, you, oh no, we free... did. We had two dessert. Mine came with. Yeah, yours. Oh, it was. It was the. It was the crumble. It was the. 
a rhubarb crumble with oh, and yeah. I ordered the gelato ice cream. It was terrific. And then we had a chocolate mousse dessert. Oh, good. oh yeah, we didn't leave it. We didn't leave a thing. <laughs> good. <laughs> Can't get better than that. And what about because you've got the prefix? Do you do you feel that this was a, a good value? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, terrific value. And what they did, which I like, because when you're a little older, sometimes you can't eat that much. So the first <laughs> and the third courses are supposed to be smaller, and the middle course, which is the main, is full. The full size, and I was stuffed. So mm -hmm. I thought it was perfect. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, no complaints from me. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> All right, well, this is your restaurant, so I want you to wrap it up for us, Joanna. I would say that this is a cozy neighborhood spot with delicious French bistro food, and you will not be disappointed. Lois? An unexpected surprise, and I'd definitely make the trip to San Francisco to go again. Oh, all right, right. and wow. Ed. Uh, cheaper than a trip to Paris, and uh, <laughs> with an unexpectedly robust menu of French bistro cuisine. All right. If you would like to try Zazie, it's on Cole Street at Carl in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-564-5332. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner weekdays with brunch and dinner on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $30. I want to thank my great guests on this week's show, Ed Uishima, who chose Pago Lac, Mom's Vietnamese Kitchen, Lois Lori with Della Santina's Trattoria, and Joanna Manders and Zazie. Let us know what you think about these places by visiting our website at kqed.org slash check, please, and adding your comments. Details of all the restaurants featured are listed on the website, along with the show segments, and you can watch or download a show. You can read my notes on the wine we're drinking, a Laura Donna Viognier. Don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Good show. This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. Check Please Bay Area is brought to you by Amici's East Coast Pizzeria serves up the aromas and tastes of the Northeast's distinctive Italian fare with freshly made pastas, homemade minestrone, and pizzas cooked in brick ovens at their 12 Bay Area locations. Wines from Italy and California served by a professional staff complement the smart, casual restaurants, which are open daily for a quick business lunch or an evening meal out with family and friends. Menu and location information can be found at amici's.com. Amici's East Coast Pizzeria, proud to support KQED Public Broadcasting. Tourism Australia's chef-led journeys and wildlife excursions to Kangaroo Island are for travelers with a passion for food, wine, and adventure. Information at australia.com slash now. And by Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. And the Campaign for the Future Program Venture Fund and the members of KQED. A KQED HD production.